Hello, Internet. This is Howard. I'm my sidekick. Ivan. With great hair, fresh off the boats from Bulgaria, talking about trends. Ten minutes a week, we got to nail it down to one, two, three ideas. Today we're going to talk about the consumer, and you know why? They're not dead, despite $6 gasoline in L.A. Ivan, yeah. what does it cost to fill your little Honda? Right now, today. I drive an Infinity, by the way, but oh, uh, you're about Infinity. 60 bucks, yeah. $60 for young Ivan to fill his tank, yet still has time to get the latest iPhone and apps. So let's, let's not talk about Apple today. Let's talk about three great consumer companies of, that people aren't following. Nike, Under Armour, Lulu. Ivan, who's the biggest of the three? Uh, for sure, Nike. N Nike is a global brand that is, it's a name that is known anywhere in the world. $45 billion, Ivan. Uh, Lulu's an 11-ish uh, billion dollar company, so already 25% of the size of Nike. Probably been around uh, just eight or nine years, maybe 10. Nike's been around 40 years, people. Uh, so already uh, one-fourth the size and basically sells a fraction of the type of goods that Nike sells. And Nike obviously getting into the low-end uh, uh, yoga type products. And then there's Under Armour, sneaky, sneaky company at all-time highs. Right now, Under Armour, Lululemon, really, really uh, under accumulation by the world, of t at least around the stocks. Under Armour and Lulu near all-time highs. They're both trading near all-time highs. And uh, what is interesting about, about them is that they're only, fit, they're only sold in US. They're only popular in US. Like if you go to Europe, no one even know what Lululemon is or no one even knows what Under Armour is. Yeah, so like, if you go into a sports area, this is interesting how Under Armour's dominated US a uh, mind share, especially you know, tough market to break in with with Nike. But if you walk into a sports authority or, or a Dick's Sporting Goods, the the, the amount of, uh, of of equipment and 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 new styles that Under Armour is unleashing on uh, on kids at a young age now with like you know padding type uh, undergarments. Uh, obviously, kids love their underwear. So they've they've really moved in on swoosh uh, swoosh territory. Then there's Lulu, which has captured uh, the fascination of of women and uh, obviously men that do yoga at a very high price point, very high margin, very much a culture. Uh, we were talking on the way over with Lindsay, and Lulu has this cult basically where uh, to move up within the organization you have to go through all these leadership, uh, et cetera, type courses, and very much like uh, building a long-term generation of next leaders for retail. Yep. So tell us a little bit about what you think uh, about Under Armour. From just a, a you know trend perspective, well, it, it's a very strong stock, and in in my eyes, it, it could be the new Nike, just because it's represented only in the U.S. and it has great designs, uh, great great stuff. Like I wear Under Armour all the time when yeah. I'm uh, dressed uh, in sports attire. So from a from a theme of relatively relativity. Uh, at uh, six billion dollar market cap, which Under Armour has, but about a, uh, one eighth the size of Nike. Yeah. Um, and as Nike diversifies across uh, global, as it uh, has to obviously a much more complicated business to run, uh, a much more complicated business to grow. Under Armour is really focused on the U.S., focused on a younger generation. Actually, got into um, the hunting business at a very deep level, meaning if you are east coast of the United States or you're in the, those areas where hunters are cra you know, fanatical, uh, they are now wearing Under Armour gear. So they're really going deep within uh, verticals in the sporting goods, whereas Nike owns uh, basketball and Nike owns uh, uh, soccer maybe and you know, moved into hockey. Under Armour's moved into hunting and some of these younger, uh, hipper, uh, like football and baseball for kids, where they're really kind of taking a step. Now, in, in my opinion, that helps keep Nike uh, on their toes and Nike fresh. But uh, from a shareholder perspective, you're going to own one of these three stocks, Lulu, Nike, Under Armour, uh, in October 2012. Uh, what, what kind of interests you right here? Yeah, for sure Under Armour. Just because I, I'm also a customer, I'm a user, and, uh, and I understand that the brand has huge potential to grow out overseas. And can we pull up a chart? Can we pull up a chart of Under Armour? 
quickly. I'm just going to pull up a chart here. Well, the reason uh, we're talking about all three is because all three are dominant consumer brands. I mean, diversified enough, uh, big enough brands, but also part of this huge uh, leisure and consumer uptrend where uh, the prices of goods uh, the deflation in terms of building these goods is dropping and the pricing power for these companies in terms of the way they use marketing to increase their uh, sales prices increases. So there's good margins for these companies too, which is something that companies, which is something investors look at. So do we have a, a chart of uh, so Under Armour yeah, up here? Yeah, this is a monthly chart. The stock is up about seven times since the 2009 lows. Yeah, so this is not uh, something that's being discovered very early. But again, it doesn't scare us off when we're thinking about trends and momentum. As I said, we, we always uh, look at those companies from a market cap perspective. And from a market cap perspective, it really has a lot of room to grow, yes. to, to catch Nike. So uh, for us, that's uh, one that Ivan and I have looked. I own Nike, and let me just quickly give you a, a thesis. How much time do we have left today? I own Nike for a few different reasons. I truly believe, Ivan, in the armband and the data business. And I think where Nike's diversifying, not factored in properly, is in the data business itself. Uh, if, you, if you remember the Livestrong uh, bracelets, and now think what Apple, I mean Nike has done around the, the fitness bracelets, which are tracking all this data. So now they're linking this equipment of the 21st century to your body. And so I like to think of Nike as this huge biotech data company. Uh, now Under Armour and, and Lululemon are, are, are going to slowly get into that business too, but they're so busy growing their core businesses to compete with Nike on clothing and, and, and verticals. Nike's thinking well beyond that and thinking through the data. So as you run throughout the day or as you take steps throughout the day, uh, there's small companies like Fitbit and then there's Nike. And Nike's collecting all this data, giving it, serving it back to you in the form of you took 6,000 steps today, you took 10,000 mm -hmm. steps today, whether it's in your Nike gear or in your Under Armour gear or at your yoga class wearing Lulu, and they can serve that back to you and create all kinds of products around the data. And uh, does that interest you at all as a young man? Yeah, absolutely. So you're saying that Nike could be the next Nike? Yeah, I like it. It's a great point. There's this, this, this great book called uh, Finding the Next Starbucks. And that's what Ivan is referring to. And when I read that title, I go, well, that's a genius title. But maybe Starbucks is the next Starbucks. And what I like to say about some of these companies like Nike is you don't have to find the next Nike, although Under Armour and Lulu have proven to be incredible companies uh, on the heels of a Nike. But Nike is in itself capable of reinventing itself along different product lines and becoming the next Nike itself. So when I look at data, I think about how much people are interacting now beyond just the clothing and thinking about Nike as it's attached to the wrist and eventually maybe through their iPhone or uh, through uh, any of their uh, uh, clothing or equipment. And as they start thinking about fitness and getting in shape, losing weight, uh, communicating with family about their health, etc. I think you've coined up a really nice term for that called foshology, mm -hmm. like the mix between fashion and technology. I think Apple was the pioneer in that field, and yeah. that's why they were so successful. And we could certainly see Nike going in that direction. Like they started as a as a technology company, as a fabric company, but they're moving towards technology. Yeah, nobody wants to see Motorola uh, sunglasses, but I think. Nike sunglasses or Oakley sunglasses powered with data from mm -hmm. you know Nike and like we saw with Apple with uh, early on Nike was creating a, a music type headphone. So I think fashionology is something that I've talked about for five years and yeah that's something that you think about when you're thinking about Lulu, Nike, Under Armour and of course Apple uh, which we talk about here a lot as well. So uh, that's going to wrap it up today. Just to refresh you know, come to Stock Twits. We talk about this stuff all day long, and uh, we love talking about trends. Today was Under Armour, Lulu, and Nike. Have a great week, everybody. And uh, Ivan, see you guys. Yeah. yeah, thanks for your help today, and thanks to at the Tribune at UTTV for uh, making this show a reality. <laughs>